Are you interested in getting your Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate? Who actually needs a Part 107? And do you need to register your drone? I'll answer these questions and provide you detailed instructions on how to get your Part 107 and how to properly register your drone along with all the necessary links. So let's get right into it. Welcome back everyone. It's Joe from Ghost1917. I think I spent more time tracking down all the sources and figuring out all of the steps involved in registering my drones and getting my Part 107 than the actual process took, including studying. So I thought I would consolidate everything for you so you don't have to spend the time I did searching and can instead focus your time studying and then getting your Part 107 and registering your drones. This isn't gonna be a how to ace the part 107 video because honestly, the secret to how to pass your part 107 isn't a secret at all. There's no shortcut or tricks to passing it. You need to properly prepare and put some time in studying. What I am going to do is provide you with all the links to all the sources I use to prepare for my part 107 and walk you through the whole process. I split this video into chapters. So if you wanna see a particular part of the process, you can jump to that portion of the video, either by clicking on the video timeline or on one of the timestamps in the description below. First things first, whether you're flying as a part 107 pilot or flying under the exception for recreational flyers, everyone needs to pass the TRUST, that's T-R-U-S-T, safety test. It's a simple test you take online. I'll provide a link below to the website where I took the test, but there are several places online where you can take the test and it's a can't fail test, so don't sweat it. So, you're interested in getting your Part 107, but who actually needs a Part 107? The short answer is, if you're flying your drone for anything other than pure recreation, then you need your Part 107. This even means flying your drone to take pics of your buddy's house for free so he can use them to sell his house. No financial transaction needs to take place. The question you need to ask yourself is, what is the purpose of the flight? It's that simple. Next question, do I need to register my drone? If your drone's takeoff weight exceeds 250 grams, then yes, you need to register your drone. Additionally, if you're using your drone for commercial purposes, regardless of its weight, you again need to register your drone. There are two types of FAA drone registrations, recreational and part 107. They both cost five bucks and are valid for three years. The difference is a recreational registrant receives one single registration number for all of their drones. The part 107 registrant needs to register each drone individually and obtain a unique registration number for each drone. The registrations look slightly different. The Part 107 has your drone's make, model, and serial number, along with its unique registration number, where the recreational registration has only the registration number, as it can be used for each of your drones. Bonus tip, if you're planning on getting your Part 107, you can save yourself five bucks by waiting to register your drone under Part 107 because once you register your drone as recreational, you cannot transfer it to a Part 107 registration. I figured that out after spending the five bucks on the recreational reg. The registration process is quite simple. First, you need to create an FAA Drone Zone account at faadronezone.faa.gov. Then choose either recreational or Part 107 registration and follow the prompts and pay your five bucks to the feds. Now, how to get your Part 107. The first step is passing the trust safety test. There's a link below to the Pilot Institute, which is where I completed my trust test. But like I said, you can Google FAA trust test and find many other sites where you can complete it online. The next step is to create an IACRA account. That's I-A-C-R-A which stands for Integrated Airman Certification and Rating Application. And there's only one place to do this, and it's here at iacra.faa.gov. Just follow the prompts on the screen and set up your IACRA account. After doing this, you can start your Part 107 application. Once complete, you'll be issued an FTN, which is your FAA tracking number. You'll need this to schedule your Part 107 exam. Next, you need to find a testing site and schedule an exam. You do this by first creating a PSI True Talent account at this website, faa.psiexams.com. After you create your PSI account, you then search for a test site near you 
and schedule your exam. Currently, the cost for the exam is $175. Once you pass your exam, you'll be given an Airman Knowledge Test Report with your grade and your FTN, which is your FAA tracking number. Do not lose this report as it is the only way you can apply for your remote pilot certificate. Well, really, you just need the information on it which is why as soon as I got back in my car after passing the exam, I took a picture of it and saved it to my phone. Also, I figured out later on, you can retrieve it from your PSI account at any time. Now, using the information that's on the test report, you go back and log into your IACRA account and complete the Start New Application section. The application type is Pilot. Certifications is Remote Pilot. And then Other Path Information will fill out automatically then start application. After completing the application, you'll receive a temporary AM insert in about two weeks. And then you'll receive your actual certification card approximately one month after that. To give you an idea of how long that whole process takes, I listed the actual dates I took my exam, got my temp cert, and then my permanent card in the description below. So how did I prepare for the exam? The first thing I did was print out the Airman Knowledge Testing Supplement Handbook. This is the actual booklet you'll be given when you take your exam. It's free to download on the FAA's website. I'll leave a link below for that. It's a PDF and you can certainly work with it on a computer, but I felt since I was going to be using a printed version for the actual exam, I thought it would be a good idea to get comfortable using the printed version. If you familiarize yourself with the book, you'll be much more comfortable when using it during your exam and you'll cut down on the time it takes to find what you're looking for. Next, I started taking the King Schools exams until I consistently scored around 90%. You can take an actual 60 question exam with all the different areas included. That's the actual number of questions on the Part 107 exam. Or you can take practice tests focusing on the areas you need more work on, such as the sectional charts or weather reports. Those are the METAR and TAF reports. Once I was comfortable with the exam questions and format and had consistently scored 90% or better, I took the FAA practice exam at the PSI website and scored a 96%. Another bonus tip, go to the link below for the FAA website and familiarize yourself with the new rules for night flights, flying over people, and flying from a moving vehicle as there were questions about these rules on my exam, and I expect they'll be on current and future exams in some form or fashion, as they are the most recent changes to the UAS rules and regs. These were not covered on the practice tests I was using, so I had to study them directly from the FAA website. You need to score a 70% or better to pass the exam, which means you can get 18 questions wrong and still pass. So after scoring in the 90s on the King School's practice tests, and then a 96% on the FAA practice test, I felt confident enough to schedule my actual exam. I ended up scoring an 88% on the actual Part 107 exam. You don't need to bring anything with you to the exam site. Everything you need is provided. I arrived for the exam and was escorted to the testing room. My testing center had three cubicles alongside one another in a closed room, and during my exam, there were two other people taking their Part 107s. My office happens to be on the property of a general aviation airport, so I had several testing centers to choose from, which were all within walking distance of my office. Obviously, this was super convenient, and not everyone is going to have multiple testing centers that close, so I recommend going onto the PSI website and searching for a testing center before starting the whole process so you know how far you'll have to be traveling to take your exam. You can do this without creating a user account on PSI. So after choosing my location, I visited it to see what it was like and where I would be taking my exam. If you can do this, I highly recommend you doing so as it helps to reduce your anxiety having already visited the testing center. The whole process from start to finish, including studying and receiving my actual card, took me about six weeks. It's not super involved and well worth it if you have any intentions of making money with your drone. As always, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions or if you'd like to share your experience getting your Part 107. And while you're down there, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.